What's up, everybody? Uh, hope everybody's been doing good. I've been doing great. Uh, but a lot has happened since I last posted vids, I think like a year ago or something. Uh, but hey, uh, once again, just another video of me saying, hey, I'm back. <laughs> uh, this time, however, my oldest kid is in school. And uh, that means a lot when it comes to time. Uh, and with that time, here recently, I'm now on this video wanting to tackle a topic that I had time to research for future scaling. This is going to be a big one, all right, because it's going to apply retroactively as well as what's going to be coming up in all future videos. That is going to be air pressure feats. Remember all those air pressure feats that we looked at in the past? Because, well, things are about to be shaken up quite a bit, so bear with me. Because, as we know, uh, this channel, the goal is to be as accurate and consistent as possible. In the past, when it came to air pressure feats, I'd always been using a 1,000 times minimum multiplier. And at, as it turns out, that's not just a low ball. It was a massive low ball. I mean, I always figured, of course, makes sense. Uh, but I and seemingly no one else that does scaling had any information on the actual difference in power between an object's direct force and the air pressure it creates. That is until now we did it. All right, basically... Air pressure comes down to an object forcefully moving air molecules in volume equal to the volume of the object taking up that space in motion, that's a one-to-one -one ratio, and does so at the speeds the object is moving, also a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's honestly simple enough. But what multiplier is this? Well, that's going to depend on the shape and ultimately aerodynamics. A fist and a sword are going to have massively different base multipliers, for example, but the absolute just most important distinction in an air pressure feat, uh, being more impressive or not, uh, is going to be based on the difference in that object's density in relation to the air around it. Uh, and when it comes to air and the density of air, uh, this is going to call into question uh, the height from sea level as well as the temperature and things, um, as those affect the density of air that is going to make the relation of that air density to the matter actually moving it. All right, let's look at some examples. This is a lot. Maybe I'm going too fast. I'll try to break it all down, okay? But this is big for scaling. I don't think, again, anybody else actually has air pressure scaling uh, other than just assumptions or, again, huh, you know, made-up statements that we just take as fact. Anyways, all right, let's look at an example. We're going to use a basic katana made of what? Because again, we're going to need that density. I'm going to use high carbon steel because that's what I've already calced and that's what's going to be easiest for me. And let's say this katana is swung 10 meters a second across a 10 meter slash. All right, so that's the distance 10 meters. They're swinging at 10 meters a second. Cool. And that's the speed. Um, this is going to be the dimensions of the sword. And with high carbon steel density, we're getting a sword with this much mass. Again, moving this many meters per second, resulting in a force of 7.09 newtons of force, right? Okay, awesome. And here's the thing. With this, we have an idea, again, of the force that this sword would actually be creating. But what about the air pressure that that same swing would be creating? Well, given, again, that the volume of air displaced is equal to the volume of the object displacing it at a given time and that the speed at which the air is being displaced is equal to the speed the object is dipl displacing it, sorry, aka moving, the main difference, again, lies at that density, and that's where your average air density comes to. This number here, this many kilograms per centimeter cubed, resulting in an air mass of this many kilograms, okay? Now, you plug the numbers, and you'll find the force is equal to this many newtons. Compare the two, what's the difference between the air pressure, how much, uh, how much force in newtons is the sword creating, versus how much force is the air pressure creating. And we see that is just a bit over 6,520 times, and that's a pretty darn good multiplier. Uh, but is this really the air pressure multiplier? Was it just this easy all along? Well, let's keep going. Okay. This is force, this is newtons, right? But how about pressure directly? What if we measure pressure directly? The pressure the sword would exert on matter versus the pressure the air would exert on matter, aka air pressure, 
the sword itself with these parameters, the same parameters, would exert this many uh, pascals, I believe they were. And I have it written down as PA. I'm going to have it on screen as PA. I believe it's pascals. Um, maybe I'm thinking of pascals wager. <laughs> wager. Anyways, it's, it's doing this number for pressure, okay? The air pressure, however, the actual air itself, the force it's doing for pressure, would instead be this many. And do the math bring out your calculators, whatever you need, you'll see that the difference is exactly the same. Okay, what if we change the speed of the object, right? Instead of 10 meters per second, do that, it's exactly the same. What if we change the size of the object, right? Instead of uh, uh, the katana being at the length and volume and whatever that it is, uh, it's as big as a Susano sword, okay? It's going to be the same once more. This is because the speed at which the air is displaced is equal to the speed of the object displacing it. Kind of a no-duh, honestly. And the volume or size that an object actually displaces air at is at an equal ratio to the volume or size of that object moving through air, you know, at a given time. Another kind of a no-duh, right? Everything ultimately comes down to something called Archimedes' principle. And doing so gives us some pretty solid base multipliers. And whether you measure force, uh, measure pressure, uh, we can utilize something called impulse momentum to calculate an object's force in motion to recheck what Archimedes' principle shows you, or ultimately even come back to the basic force equals mass times acceleration once you've you know actually plugged everything in. You will each and every time see what the Archimedes principle shows you at the end without fail and consistently so because you're calculating the same thing in different ways. And so yes, this is it. This is, we, we did it. We found air pressure multipliers. Now, with this comes another layer. Well, many other layers, but first up is that I've been saying base multipliers this whole time, right? Let's consider the full multipliers. Um, now, to get to that, starting with a human hand and not a sword, I'll quickly tell you that unlike the sword's base, 6,520 times multiplier, a human hand instead comes with but a slightly higher than just 905 times multiplier, when in factoring in the same speed, but different density, uh, different mass, which is gonna be because of density and things. Um, and a much different aerodynamic flow, right? But this isn't where it ends. Again, for the full multiplier, see, you have to understand, energy, and in this case, the air pressure, spreads out. It does not flow with the exact same force in a set direction. And you could say that feats where this happens, where like the air pressure cuts or flows, uh, without expanding, destroying something in a, you know, similar volume size proportional to the actual, like, main attack, again, like a sword, maybe the air pressure cuts the ground, right, like a little crescent cut or something on the ground in, like, direct proportion to the blade itself, that is not a proper air pressure feat. Uh, and so that, that's just because air pressure does not function that way. Okay, so you could say that feats where that happens, what I just explained, is just a part of fiction being fiction, baby. That's just how it is. However, in that case, air pressure attacks could be exactly as powerful as the full contact blow then because fiction is being fiction, baby, and actually it's not any stronger than. So, look, the reason I consider air pressure weaker than full contact is because it's true in real life. And unless a fictional setting or fiction in general sets itself apart from reality, reality is the starting point. Uh, from gravity to the sizes of things like mountains or people to how durable, say, rock is or not, fiction is fiction isn't good. We need a starting point, and real life is it. And so in light of understanding how air pressure works, real life as the basis, the energy of the air pressure spreads out. It matters a lot, actually. It's not something we can just gloss over. Uh, 
It doesn't just continue in a single and set path. That's a big thing. Uh, take, for example, we understand, uh, well, I hope we, you know, everybody should understand something called inverse square law, all right, when it comes to energy. When it comes to the inverse square law, it's a method of calculating the difference of acting force over an area as the energy expands outwards from the initial source. Um, initially, I thought the math was specific to a spherical propagation, um, since it, you know, kind of calls out uh, pi. However, it does in fact apply to all shapes of expanding energy with cones being the most used air pressure shape. Uh, but realize, it is always a matter of three-dimensional expanding of the energy, always. So, where does this take us? First, the full multiplier is going to be the base multiplier with the factor of the difference in size of the initial air pressure first created and the final air pressure doing whatever x feet on top um you know on top of the base multiplier utilizing inverse square law made easily representable in feats such as say sensui's punch uh, which is best represented by a cone now depending on the difference in initial size and final size the full multiplier can end up being many, even tens of thousands times higher when you get to things like Sensui's Punch reaching out as far uh, as something as absolutely massive as Beheaded Hill, right? Um, another example, both punches, oddly. Saitama's is even more impressive than that, okay? He's, his, I haven't calced it yet. It's going to be massive. And honestly, why wouldn't it? Uh, again, we already knew from the get-go that my 1,000 times was a massive low ball, but I wanted to make sure that I was factually correct, and I was. All my numbers are definitely at minimum true, but now at being as accurate as possible is coming into play, and that's why we will be updating. Uh, that's where this is all coming from, right? Okay, now, again, what about air pressure feats then that don't spread out like in real life? I've already said it once. I'm going to be hitting it here again. Again? Well... Sadly, that means they are no longer valid, at least not in trying to remain as accurate as possible. Uh, saying that these air pressure feats are valid when we understand real life is like um, using a gravity feat in a different, you know, in a fictional setting, um, but the gravity is not functioning like gravity in reality, and it's doing some all weird things that has nothing to do with gravity in real life. It, it's the energy is propagating in a way that is completely counterintuitive to how air pressure would actually be calculated given real life. So they are no longer valid. Um, the air pressure clearly conserves in these scenarios, clearly is conserving the energy hitting completely unlike real life and makes the force of the air pressure much more likely to fictionally function more equally with the force of the object itself and not just be any different in power. Uh, and that right there, is what ultimately is going to be nullifying most air pressure feats. All right, so with all this said, what this means in the end is that some feats will be buffed to their true air pressure multipliers, others will no longer be valid, thus nerfed. I'll at some point be bringing up the new levels of power this means for certain feats and series, but until then, I hope every one of you can get hype knowing something so important is finally scalable in a proper way. I don't think any other channel has, uh, actually I was going to say no other channel has this, but no other channel has a lot of what this channel, uh, that my channel is bringing to the table, but this is yet another thing. Um, I'll link the different calculators below, uh, even post the steps taken, so feel free to check out you know, the description, try some calcs yourself if you wish. Um, and yeah, I'll be ending this by saying that uh, this will be having a decent impact on Bleach, massive impact on Yu Hakusho, and a one in a million, I mean, just ridiculous impact on Saitama's air pressure feat, who had already shown to already outscale it regardless, because he has the most absolutely just ridiculous scaling and showings and feats. I mean, sneezing away that much of Jupiter type of stuff. You know, you already know Saitama. Anyway, I'll see y'all in the next video. Ciao.